Hey there, (laughs) this is Mike, and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. So what's going on? It's been a while since my last episode. I'm really glad to be back. You know, the Bible is full of verses that tell us to have faith. Jesus tells those who he's healed or healed loved ones of those who come to him that your faith has healed you or words close to that. In the eighth chapter of Luke, the leader of the synagogue comes to him about his daughter who has now died. And Jesus, overhearing them talking about it, tells the father, do not be afraid, only believe, and she is healed. Only believe. That's it. (laughs) In the ninth chapter of Mark, A father of a sick child comes to Jesus and asks if he can please help. And Jesus says, one of my favorite lines, anything is possible for the one believing. One uh, part of that little story that I seldom hear is the father replies, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Hmm. Why do you think that's in there? Because it's okay. It is okay to have moments of like, oh, <laughs> those feelings of unbelief or disbelief. It's okay. And I know in the manifesting community, we, you know, we talk about you got to believe, you got to know, but you're a human being in this garment of flesh with all these emotions. And I'm not the only one saying this. I noticed uh, Koti Tia uh, the other day talked about this too, and others do, those who get it. It's okay. You're human. You're God, but you're also human. You're here for a purpose, and you chose this role. It's okay to admit that there's, you have moments of this uh, feeling of lacking the belief That's a desire too. How would I feel if I could enter a state, a state of my choosing at will and rest in it, completely confident in myself, knowing that I've got it? Hmm. Hey, it's a desire, take it. Assume the feeling of that desire fulfilled. Anyway. It's okay. It's okay. (laughs) I think it's so easy to get caught up in the whole business of manifesting. I mean, as a consumer, getting so wrapped up in searching for another teacher, one more program to finally get me over the hump, always reaching, groping for help from those that seem to be on the outside. It was certainly like that for me. Even after I was healed, or more accurately, moved from a state in which the brain lesions and dystonia were present to one in which they were no longer present or weren't present. I've mentioned this before. I went nuts. I was online searching for answers in social media posts and reading and or listening to several of Neville Goddard's lectures a day. I was, well, it was just crazy drove my kids crazy too because that's all I would listen to on the radio (laughs) in the car. Can we listen to music? No, I need Neville. (laughs) I did gain a lot of knowledge. I know a lot about Neville Goddard and his life and I can quote a lot of his lectures and a lot of times somebody can give a quote to me and I can tell you what lecture that's from. Don't test me. (laughs) But I wasn't applying it. I wasn't living it. I spent so many months studying, but not actually applying what was being said. I'd abandoned the fun of being human for the study of the theory of it and becoming or trying to become something more. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you to stop looking online or buying books and programs from teachers or tell you to stop listening to podcasts about manifesting and 
so much more. <laughs> but what good are they if you aren't really putting it into practice? And what good are they if those teachers or podcasts become things you rely on outside of your own being? That feeling of, oh, I've got to, I've got to listen to this guy. I've got to read another post. I need this. I need them to notice me. I need their attention. Hmm. Sounds like a false god. Your own wonderful human imagination is all you need. For so long, I looked outside of myself and relied on others, teachers, motivational speakers, even Neville. I'd become so dependent on them that I forgot who was really behind all of this. I was so busy studying and reaching and groping and trying and fighting and, oh, uh, right? Am I the only one that has felt this? <laughs> I am the sole cause. Repeat this. Say this with me. I am the sole cause. Hmm. <laughs> Back then, I would be going about my day and then have a thought, a little bit of a thought about something not going the way I wanted it. And before I knew it, it was all out panic. And it became a habit. I didn't even think about it. I would quickly find a lecture of Neville's or search for answers in an online teacher's posts. I think you might know what I'm talking about. You have this feeling of urgency, this slight panic, like, oh, crap. Quickly, let's find Neville. Let's find this teacher, that teacher. Let's find feeling twisty. Don't look to me. I'm here reflecting you, but don't rely on me. It's all within you. Even this podcast. See? <laughs> if I wasn't in a position to listen to a lecture or go online, I would. I could be anywhere at a... At a somebody's house, in our own house, having dinner, anywhere. And I would just get so panicked and uptight and tense. I would just excuse myself, run to the bathroom or my bedroom if I were home. And on the way to the bathroom or bedroom or wherever my little prayer closet was and trying to hurriedly come up with some new scene. What, what can I imagine? I need to imagine something. I need a scene. I need a scene. I need to do this right. Oh, man. So much angst. I didn't need to find an empty room to get into the silence. To be aware of the stillness that is always with me. Because it is me. This immovable rock of my salvation. Hmm. My I amness. The I am never changes. My states do. But as long as I continue to believe that I am the state that I'm presently entertaining, I could get lost in it. And when I'm lost in a state, oh, how do I get out of it? I need help. Oy vey. <laughs> Just breathe. Loosen my focus for just a moment. Mm. The habit of turning to Neville Goddard every moment of my day was such a tough one to break. Neville Goddard's lectures and other teachers, their product, uh, it, it had become comfort food for me. Just listening to it passively, but with this need that I'm not complete unless I listen. <laughs> that I never really was applying anything. Living. I wasn't living. Oh, man. I wasn't experiencing the beauty and joy of this present moment. Hmm. There's so much beauty right here, right now, in the people you meet, in the blue of the sky, in the white or gray of the clouds. 
the way the ceiling and the walls come together in a perfect angle. <laughs> There's beauty all around you, around me. And everything I look at is coming from me. I'm experiencing this. And I'm causing this. So back to my crazy habit, my comfort food of manifesting teachers. I was relying on them to feed me instead of taking action in imagination and appropriating my own food. <laughs> you know what I mean, not just food, but anything, my own life. Listen, Neville teaches wonderful techniques and I found some modern current teachers who do as well. But if you're continually relying on them instead of actually turning to self, you're making them a false god. You know, I would do this. I would, <laughs> something would come up and, oh, what does Neville, what lecture does he talk about this? I know he does. And I'll do a word search for some topic and find a lecture in which he talks about this. Or think about, oh, okay, what does this teacher say? Let me check their posts. Let me find somebody. What's that Instagram account that always has great quotes? I just need one more great inspirational quote to fix this. <laughs> hey, I'm talking about myself. I did this. Instead of wondering what this or that person says about a topic or what or how to imagine, instead of asking, what do they say? Ask myself, what do I say? What do I say? What do I want? What am I feeling or allowing right now? I know better than anybody what fulfillment feels like. It only takes a few moments to find that rock within you, that stillness, that love. And you already know exactly what you want. You've been thinking about it all day today, probably, and yesterday, maybe. And your acceptance of the wish fulfilled is all that it takes, a continued acceptance. That's what Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, whatever you claim in prayer, and prayer is movement in imagination, whatever you claim in prayer, continue believing, is already yours. I have it now. Because that's all we have, you know, right? It's always now, right here, right now. What am I feeling? What am I aware of? And it will be yours. <laughs> that's the rest of the verse. Acceptance of the end wills the means. The Bible has all points us to ourselves all the time. Commune with your own heart on your bed and be silent. Work out your own salvation. Unless you believe I am He, you'll die in your sins. That isn't a God on the outside. That's your own I amness. When you commune with your own heart, yourself, that communion is with your unlimited self from which all things come. And they're all present. <laughs> they're all here now. Here's a wonderful quote of Neville's. That which you seek is already housed within you. Were it not now within you, eternity could not evolve it. No time stretch would be long enough to evolve what is not potentially involved in you. You simply let it into being by assuming that it is already visible in your world and remaining faithful to your assumption. It will harden into fact. Your father has unnumbered ways of revealing your assumption. Fix this in your mind and always remember an assumption, though false, if sustained, will harden into fact. You and your father are one and your father is everything that was, is, and will be. Therefore, that which you seek, you already are. It can never be so far off as even to be near. 
for nearness implies separation. What could comfort you more than the knowledge that you don't have to wait for your dreams to come true? They are nearer than here and sooner than now. Let this knowledge be your comforter. <sighs> mm. <laughs> I know it might seem so outrageous to think all things exist already within your own consciousness, within awareness, and that it doesn't have to take a long time or hard work to make your dreams come true. But it is. Hmm. I love how he says, just let it into being by assuming that it's already visible in your world. Don't get lost in trying to manifest just like some other teacher or speaker does. Only you really know what that feeling of fulfillment or acceptance feels like. And you, only you knew, know what technique, if you use a technique, it works best for you. It's all you. Don't look outside of yourself trying to compare yourself to what they do. That's hell. I've been there. Ugh. Turn to self. You know what it feels like and you know what to do. You do. No, I don't, Mike. <laughs> Don't get tripped up on making it about the other, trying to fix something so this person or that person will love me more or won't be angry with me. Feels de very different than feeling what I want to feel about a situation, what I want to feel, how I feel. My self-concept is the key. The seeming others around me will conform to that new self-concept my new self-concept changes my world. If we know he hears us in whatever we ask, we know we already have it. That's 1 John 3.15. Now he isn't a he, it's I am, your very own consciousness, your awareness of being. So God does already know what you want. And any technique you might want to try is just a way to get you to the point of acceptance of the end. And there are so many wonderful techniques and teachers out here. But you are individually God, not a fragment, the whole in a seeming separate piece. Your very own being already knows how to express every one of your desires. Get quiet for just a few moments. And instead of trying to conjure up something to imagine, just be okay with the stillness and the darkness. There isn't one thing that has happened prior to this moment that means anything, unless you want it to. There isn't anything you think will be happening in a little while that means anything unless you want it to. In fact, other than right here, right now, this present moment you're in, nothing really exists as a solid reality for you. You can imagine it, think about it. But this present moment is all that matters. You are the word that was with God in the beginning. And that beginning is always happening. This is a beginning. Every moment is a beginning. Your whole world is formed by the meaning you give it. The word was with God and the word was God. Hmm. That's you. And forget time. Drop the idea that the changes you want will have to take time. Now, nothing is instantaneous. Everything takes time or you would never experience change. But drop this idea that, oh, this is going to take some time to work on. 
I've got all this to do. I've got to, oh, it's too much work. It's all within you. Not in your little body. Your body is within you. Neville describes space as a facility for experience and time as a facility for change of experience. That's how we experience change. I was this a moment ago and now I'm this. <laughs> 2020, that's Mr. 2020, once suggested that time is a state of consciousness. And I like that. Consciousness being the only reality, then all things that show up within consciousness are states of consciousness. The being you really are is love, and perfect love drives out all fear. Your true self doesn't contain fear, but power and love. The Bible tells us that the spirit God gave us is not one of fear and timidity, cowardice, but one of power and love and self-control. This being, your true self, knows exactly what you want and has the plan of expression, the how to get there, all the means it that are necessary and it's uh, <laughs> it's rarely what i thought it should be like this is how it's going to be my the depths of my own being my imagination always has a much smoother way to get me there smoother than i thought it had to go so drop the how stop worrying about the means to get there it's already here it comes down to deciding. You will decide a thing and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. It's an acceptance. No fighting or forcing anything. It isn't about trying to do another scene in imagination, trying to hammer it into your consciousness. You can't force it and you can't make yourself believe by force. It's allowing or letting the dream become a reality. Neville calls that keeping the Sabbath. You know what you want. You've accepted the end, however you got there. You devised, conjured up this wonderful scene, however you did it, in that moment of prayer, in that moment of motion. Now keep the Sabbath. Let it come. Let it come. Hmm. I found that it was never about doing a scene wrong or using the wrong technique for a specific desire, but my own anxiety over an issue. <laughs> I have been my own opponent this whole time. Isn't it funny that my own anxiousness and impatience for change were the only things keeping me from experiencing those wonderful changes. But Mike, I've been imagining for this particular thing and there's been no change whatsoever. I know. I understand that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many days or weeks or years you've been trying. It only matters. All of that matters if you're going to hold on to it and say it matters and keep looking backward. We're told to be here now, not look back, forget the things of old, and see, I'm doing something new here, says the Lord. Holding on to the idea of multiple failures is not helping you. The only thing that matters, if anything is going to matter, is right now, the present moment. Be still, relax, and know that I am God. You've done technique after technique, scene after scene. Just relax. Sink into the awareness of right here, right now. You don't have to try to come up with a new way to make it happen. Just relax, be still, 
and loosen your grip. And notice the beauty of this moment. You're communing with yourself when you do that. And when you do, wonderful things happen. The Bible tells us so. Test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And then another verse, call to me and I'll answer and I'll show you unsearchable things. This is you talking to you saying, call me, turn to me. Just turn to me. Just relax. I got this. Just relax. Loosen that grip. I'm right here. You don't have to hammer another scene down my throat. <laughs> it's all right here, right now. Your dreams truly are nearer than here and sooner than now. Hmm. Thank you for listening. I love you. I'm feeling twisty. <laughs> <laughs>